Do you want to have a square foot garden in raised beds, but you don't know where to start? You came to the right place, because in this video I will tell you how you can build a square foot garden and why, in my opinion, this is the best gardening method for a beginner. I will help you to choose your garden box size, give you hints on where to place your raised bed, we will talk about filling your raised beds and how you can do it for free with a little bit of work, and at the end we will try to figure it out what plants you want to plant in your kitchen garden and what's the best layout for them. And to better find yourself around, I'll put some timestamps in the comments so you can skip to the section you'd like to hear more about. If you like this kind of content and want to watch more of it, please let me know by leaving a like. And if you aren't already subscribed, do it now, so you won't miss any gardening content from me. So without further ado, let's jump into the main content. Why square foot gardening? Because it's simple. There are a few guidelines to follow, and if you do, the plants will happily grow in your raised beds. No overcrowding, no competing for nutrients, less weeding, more crop yields, less stress for you, and more enjoyment in your new garden. I use this method and I must say, it works wonders. This is what I learned so far. Size. Always a problem. My main recommendation here is to start small if you're not comfortable or if you have fear of losing all of your crops. Why? Because if you start small, it's easy to manage all the plants and you can slowly learn the plant cycles and how they grow. And with few plants there is little risk for diseases. But yes, the size of your square foot boxes is also determined on how much space you have in your garden. And if you don't have the space, you just can't have 4 4x12 raised beds right now. Why 4x12 you ask? The optimal dimensions of the square foot garden boxes are determined by a few factors. All of them are twined together, but mainly we are talking about optimizing your space and investment of time and money in building them. Let's say you will build 1x1 one one boxes. Then you'll need to have pathways between all of them and you spend your precious space on pathways instead of planting space. And you can imagine how much time and money you will need to build all of them. But the plus side is that if you do it like this, you don't waste money on soil. On the contrary, if you would build a raised bed on the entire property, imagine how much soil you need to bring in. Probably a few truckloads. And at the end, you will need to walk on the raised bed, destroying its purpose. But the plus side is that you'll probably invest just a little bit of your time and the minimum amount of wood required to build your raised bed on the cost of using more soil. So what's the optimum? A common rule of thumb is that an arm can reach 2 feet. So if you have a border planting box, it's recommended that it's a maximum of 2 feet wide. But if you can walk around your raised bed, a 4 feet wide bed is optimal because you can reach all the plants from both sides. And with those measurements, we can define the optimal raised bed size, which is 4 by 4 feet. But I found out that if you want to have more of the same crop in one bed and you want to mix it with some companion plants, which I will talk more later in the video, it's better that you build our bigger raised bed. An 8x4 would be optimal, but I choose 12x4 because I don't have much space in my small garden. Just remember that more beds equal more pathways, but less walking to do from one bed to another, and bigger beds mean less pathways, but more walking around. So it's a compromise. So now that you have an idea on what size your bed would be, where do you want to place it? This is a simple question. If you don't have space, you just put where you can and plant an appropriate crop for the shade-sun ratio. But if you have some land to choose from, place your garden on a sunny location that gets at least 8 hours of sun each day. The more, the merrier. Remember that if you need more shade, you can always make an artificial one but you can't replace the sun. Now that you're planning in your head how many raised beds you would have and what size they would be, you're probably wondering how to get all the soil for them and how much it will cost you. No worries, I have a perfect solution for you, especially if you're planning to build your garden in the next spring. And the best part is, it's totally free. All you need is the topsoil from the plot that you're already planning to build your garden beds and some fresh compost. To get your compost, you can build a compost bit system and fill it up. 
I made recently a video on how to build it and I will link it in the comments. With this system you will be able to make a compost pile and compost it until next spring when it be time to plant your first crop. To get the topsoil I used an old Irish method with which I turned the soil clods to get the height needed for the raised beds. And if you're worried about the weeds let me tell you something. If I would need to do it again I would. And the only thing I would improve on it is to do it sooner. The important thing is that you amend the topsoil with the compost and merge it with grass clippings or wood chips or straw. That way only a few persistent weeds will come out that you can weed in a few minutes. With this combination the worms and the soil microbiology are not disturbed and with the added compost you add a lot of nutrients to the soil. And my raised bed soil that I made with this process even few months in is still loose and retains moisture beautifully. For comparison my tomatoes that are under a roof need to be watered but because the soil mixture retains water so beautifully I water them three times in two months. Now that you have your raised beds in place you need to make a grid to transform them into square foot raised beds. But this process is simple and fast. All you need is a string and a few screws. Screw the screws on the border of the raised beds one foot apart all around the raised bed. Then following a zigzag pattern twine the string around the screws forming a grid like you see in the video. This is a cheap but effective way with which I created my grid and you can create it too. Now let's finally talk about plants. Depending on the size of your garden, the tight zone you are in, the vegetables that you are eating and how many mouths you want to feed, you will choose which and how many plants you want to plant. Let's say that you have a 40 square foot garden. You could plant 40 tomatoes and can them or sell them. Or you could plant 30 different crops and have just little bit of anything. We decided to go the middle route. We went with so called kitchen garden. In this way we would have enough fresh vegetables in the grow season and also some extra crops that we can store for the winter. When you decide what to plant I would also recommend that you find a local nursery from where you can buy good young established plants. The only crop that you will need to start from seeds is your carrots and potatoes. Otherwise if it's an option start with small plants instead of growing them from seed. It will be easier for you when you're learning and you can start your plants from seeds the next season when you will be more comfortable. On the local nursery you can also ask what to plant and when. They have the best experience for your local area and they do this professionally. And if you buy some plants from them they will gladly help you. Yes you can see what zone you are in and try to figure out yourself what you can and can't plant but as I said your local nursery is a great fast source of information. Now the fun part, your layout. I talked more about how many squares a plant will take in a different video, link in the description. But basically different plants take up different amount of squares. When you know that you can actually focus on your layout. There are three main things that you need to take into consideration. Companion planting, shading and watering. What's companion planting? Basically some vegetables thrive better in the vicinity of others. One can repel the best of the other or one can put nutrients in the soil that other needs. This is a huge topic and I will make a video on it one day. So be sure to subscribe to not miss it. Here you can see in my raised bed that the zucchini that were planted near the radishes thrive better, they have high yields and they look healthier. On the other hand if you plant crops that share pests you will increase the chance of them actually being in your garden. So take this into consideration when making a layout. Another thing is shading. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. From this year layout I definitely know that I will correct my cucumbers and lettuce placement. Lettuce doesn't thrive in the hot summer sun and the cucumbers will provide some needed shade for the lettuce. That way I won't need to worry about the lettuce going to bolt. On the other hand you need to be careful that you don't place your tomatoes in front relative to the sun of your papers that need a lot of sunlight. So it's all relative. Some plants need shading, some don't. It's up to you to make a layout that will benefit all of them. 
And the last thing to consider when doing a planting layout is which plants need more and which less water. But why this is important? Let's say that you plant a crop that needs a lot of water near to one that doesn't, or worse, that prefers a dry climate. If you water the crop that loves water, you will unwillingly water also the crop that hates it. And in this case, one will thrive and one will stagnate. And when you combine all of this, you can start planning your layout. If you don't want to try too hard, you can just copy mine. Just follow me in my other video where I talk about my first planting layout and when to plant your crops. And if you like the video, please leave a like and subscribe if you are not already subscribed. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and if you don't, just let me know how big your garden will be. And if you want to see where my research brought me, click the video on the screen about my first vegetable harvest and a garden tour.